So today we're going to be looking at importing an image into Procreate. So our learning intention is we're going to be developing our skills using digital programs. Our success criteria, I can import an image from the internet to Procreate. I can add a new layer. I can rename layers. I can turn layers off and on. I can select and use a colour from an existing image and I can change the opacity of an image. Our gala skills are digital literacy, practice and resilience on the Procreate app and now we're going to add a new canvas. So remember it's the plus sign in the top right corner. We're just going to choose the screen size because that's going to be the easiest. Once we've done this we need to click on the spanner in the top left hand corner. We're going to choose canvas so remember that's that kind of paper clip image and then we're going to go to crop and resize. We're going to tap on settings and make sure that our dots per inch are at 300 to optimize that for printing. Our next step is to import a photograph from the internet into Procreate. So if you do a soft swipe up from the bottom of your iPad, this menu should appear. Press and hold on Safari and then if you drag that to the side, it should separate your page into two different halves like so. So half of your screen will pro be Procreate and half of the screen will be Safari. You're now going to search either a celebrity or somebody famous um, that you're going to import into Procreate. So I'm choosing Kim Kardashian as my favourite celebrity. So I'm going to look for a photograph which I think is going to work for this task. Okay, so I've tapped on it. Now I'm going to press and hold on the image and then drag it over into Procreate. Once it's hovering over the top like this, I'm going to let it go and then you should get a little icon that says importing. So I'll find my image now, so I'm going to hold on that line and just swipe it to the side and then my whole screen will become Procreate. Now I want my image to be a little bit smaller, so I'm going to go to the pointer tool at the top left hand corner. I'm going to select uniform and this is going to be able to let me crop this image a little bit so it's a better size for the screen. I'm going to select rectangle so I can just crop off that kind of blue, black and white section. Now to get rid of this selected section, I'm going to do a three finger swipe down and I'll get this menu. I'm going to select cut and then the section should disappear. There we go. I'm now going to move this to the top left hand corner. So clicking on the little pointer tool, bringing up to the top left hand corner. I'm going to make that a wee bit bigger so it fits all of my screen. So one of our success criteria for today is creating a new layer. So top right hand corner, there's two squares stacked on top of each other. We're going to press the plus sign. So now you can see we've got three layers. We've got the background, we've got layer one and layer two. Now if you look on the left hand side in between the two slider options, there is a square. If you tap on that and then hover your finger anywhere over the page, it'll show you a magnified version of any colour that you're on. So we're going to go for the skin colour to start off with, so kind of the colour of Kim Kardashian's face. We're now going to go ahead and choose a brush to trace her face. So I'm going to go for my usual, so down to calligraphy. Okay, so I've selected the script brush. I'm going to tap on it again and you'll see that you can change the streamline of your brush. So this means that when you're drawing, you can get quite a smooth line versus quite a shaky line. So now I'm going to begin at tracing around Kim's face. So we want our line to be a complete smooth line rather than taking your finger off and on the screen. Okay, so this is important for when we fill in the face. So it needs to be a complete circuit. So there we go, joined right back to the top. Now I'm going to zoom out and do the rest of the skin tone that we can see. Depending on which brush you've used, you're going to need to change the fill level within your line. So if we go up to layers, so that's top right hand corner, the so two squares stacked on top of each other. I'm going to turn the photograph off, so that's layer one. I'm going to select my colour and drop and drag the colour within the lines that I've made. There we go. So now I'm going to change the threshold by holding down on the screen and dragging that back and forward to see which one works the best. I'm going to go back up to layers and turn the photograph back on. This is so I can choose the darker skin tone of her neck area. So same thing again. I'm going to drag and drop the colour into the image. So you can see I've done that on the wrong layer. 
So I've done a two finger tap to undo that and back onto the correct layer. So there I've filled in her neck with that darker skin colour. So back up to layers and then if you tap on your layer, so layer 2, you should get this drop down menu. I'm going to turn the opacity down so I can see what I've done but I can also draw over the top of that. So back onto layers and now we're going to think about renaming our layers so we feel less confused. So if you tap on your layer and then go to rename and then you will get this keyboard that pops up. So first one I'm going to rename that photograph. Here to go, skin, tone. And then my third layer, so I'm now going to start to work on her eyes. So I'm going to rename this eye so I know what I'm doing. So to make outlining her eyes, I'm going to zoom right in and now I'm going to choose a black colour. So turning it right down to the darkest I can, I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. So that's the option on the left hand side. You can just change that slider to whichever size you see fit. I'm going to outline all the darkest areas of the eye, so kind of the eyelid, that kind of crease in the eye, the eyelashes, and then I'm going to do the same on the other side. So remember, you can zoom in and zoom out just by pinching the screen. I'm now going to work on the eye colour, so I'm going back onto our photograph layer, and I'm going to choose a square in the middle of the two sliders to try and get the perfect colour for her eyes. So you can see the magnifying glass which will help you to choose the colour. So I'm going to zoom in in addition to this so I can really get the brown of her eyes. So you'll see in the top right hand corner that I've selected this brown colour. I'm going to go back up to layers and select the eyes layer that I'm working on. I'm drawing a wee half circle around each side of her eye. So doing this for both eyes. Now I'm going to drop and drag that colour into both of her eyes. Next step is to go back up to layers and I'm going to change the opacity. So if you tap on where it says eyes, a drop down menu should appear and you'll see it says opacity. So that is how dense the colour is. So you can see it's gone slightly see through. I'm going to be able to add more definition into her eyes and now that the colour is a little bit see through, I'm now going to do the highlights in the eye. So I've chosen a white paintbrush or a white colour and I'm going over those reflections in her eyes. So that's going to make it look even more 3D. Now I've turned off my skin tone layer or I've turned it right down so I can see where that kind of orangey brownish colour is going to go. Now I'm going to fill in the whites of her eyes just by dropping and, dropping and dragging that same white colour either side of the brown. So if I go back to skin tone and turn the opacity right up, we can see this is everything that I've drawn so far. Now the next thing I'm going to do is the lips. So I'm going to go back up to layers, add new layer. There we go, add new layer. I'm going to rename this layer lips as this is going to be the next section that I'm going to do. Now, going back to that colour selector tool on the left hand side, which is the square, I'm going to choose the colour of her lips. I'm going to zoom right in so I'm able to make this as accurate as possible. So I'm starting to outline her lips. I'm going to go through the exact same process as we did for her eyes. So now I've outlined her lips, I can see that the colours may be a little bit too bright for it what we're needing for the outlines. So I'm going to change that to one of the darker colours. So I'm using that colour selector to choose that darker shade of red in between her lips. I then drag and drop that colour around the lines that I've already drawn. So I'm going to fill in that middle line just so it's a complete smooth line. With that same colour I'm going to start to fill in all the darker areas of her lips. So that's kind of where the lips join coming out from there and then from the bottom of our lips up so this is going to give us the illusion of three dimensions. Once I've done this I'm going to choose that lighter colour again and then once I've got that I'm going to drag the circle into those lines and it should fill it out really nicely. Now we need a third tone within our lips so we're just going to go for as white as possible and then I'm going to draw on those highlights okay so that's kind of where the reflections are. So I find it helpful to zoom out and see what I've created so far. So back up to layers, so that's the two squares on top of each other. I'm going to turn the photograph off and I can see that I've got her skin, her lips and her eyes. Okay, so I'm going to turn that photograph back on and start to work on my next layer. So 
tap on where it says layer, click rename, and now I'm going to do the hair. So remember, as you're drawing, you want to complete you want to create complete circuits so that when you drag and drop your colour, it doesn't go all over the page and just stays in the areas that you'd like it to be in. I'm going to repeat this process for eyebrows. So new layer, I'm going to rename it eyebrows and then I'm going to start to draw right around where her eyebrows are. So you'll notice on this one I have turned off the skin tone layer so I'm best able to see all of her features still. Now we're going to move on to the nose, so same as usual, add a new layer and rename it. So I'm going for a nose on this one. I'm now going to choose the colour selector tool and choose a darker skin tone or a darker colour of her face. I'm going to choose my paintbrush so it's quite a thin one and I'm going to start to outline the shape of her nose. Remember you can turn your layers on and off to see how things are looking. So I'm going to turn off my photograph and see where there's any gaps within my drawing so far. So I'm going to zoom right in and you can see that there's some gaps in between the face and the hair. So I'm going to use, click onto the hair layer, select the same colour and I'm going to go over that line and just get rid of any white spaces that are in between the face the hair. Now that we've got all the spacing perfected, we're going to look at the highlights on the skin. So if you tap on the skin tone and then add a new layer, that layer will pop up right on top. Okay, so we want the highlights to be on top of our skin tone. We back up to the colour selector, remember that's the circle in the top right hand corner. So once we've chosen white, we're going to change our brush. So if you switch over to airbrushing and we are going to choose a soft brush, if you start to tap on the areas that are the lightest, then that's going to really bring your drawing to life. So kind of on her chin, underneath her lip, the tip of her nose and kind of her cheekbones as well. All of these places are really light. So you'll notice if you use the airbrush tool that it kind of blurs the edges of these highlights. So that's going to help you to create a really realistic depiction of whoever you're drawing. So other places I've included are down the middle of her nose, the corner of her eye, underneath her eyebrows and her forehead. So remember you can change the size of your brush at any point, super easy, on the slider on the left hand side. Now using the airbrush tool we're going to do the same thing but with the darker tones. So new layer and I've just called this one low lights so I can differentiate between highlights and the darker areas. So I'm going to choose somewhere on her face which is in the photograph a little bit darker. So I've gone for the area that's under her chin. So I'm going to use the slider tool on the left hand side to choose the size of my brush. I'm then going to start adding in all of the darkest areas that I can see on her face. So kind of her jawline, cheekbones, round the corner of her forehead. Once I've done this I'm going to zoom in and have a look at the different areas which are also quite dark. So down the side of her nose, where her eyelids are. Now I'm going to double check what my drawing looks like without the photograph. So I've gone to layers, I've turned off my photograph and I'm going to zoom right in and see where there might be any missed joins or things that I can make look more perfect. So I'm going to zoom right in and start to fill in these spaces. So underneath her chin it's a little bit of a mismatch of colour. So if I get us choose that colour again and then go over that line and I can kind of fill that round to make it look as realistic as possible. Then I'm going to go around the other areas of the face and just perfect those a little bit further. I've realised I've not included the highlights on Kim's collarbones. So I'm going to turn off skin tone and go back onto my highlights layer. Making sure that I've got my airbrush tool and I'm choosing a lighter colour than her skin. So I'm going to turn all of my layers on and now I'm going to delete the photograph now that I'm happy with my drawing. So if you double tap on the two squares at the top, not sure what happened there, and slide along to the left, you can tap delete. Once you've done that, if you hold your top layer and your bottom layer and do a pinching action, that'll merge all of your layers together. And there you should have your final image of your traced drawing. By the end of this tutorial, hopefully you will have developed your skills using digital programs. You should be able to import an image from the internet to procreate. You will be able to add a new layer, rename any layers, turn layers off and on, select and use a colour from an existing image and change the opacity of an image.